back at its purest, precisely in what people usually celebrate as spontaneous outbursts. For example, you are in a formal debate, then you explode, you get bored, so you do whatever. Let's say you start swearing, dirty words, and so on. I think if you look closely at how this functions, it has nothing to do with any kind of spontaneous explosion or whatever. Precisely these allegedly spontaneous outbursts are the most codified part of it. You must learn them. You become part of a civilization, collective, whatever. Precisely when you learn these carnivalesque moments of how to, how to violate the explicit rules. Let me take not only swearing, but two, three other examples. For example, drinking hard alcohol or smoking. I claim there is nothing original. If you smoke and if you remember how you learned to smoke, it's usually first when you were, I don't know, in your early teens in some initiatic group where somebody offers you, are you a man enough? If you are a man, try it. You try it and I can guarantee you if you are normal, if you are an alien, it's different. <laughs> but there are aliens. I know two aliens in the United States. <laughs> Pat, you, Pat, no, Pat Buchanan is still human. Uh, Pat Robertson is an alien. <laughs> or in Pat, or in Two of them are on my alien list, but that's another question. But I that if you are woman, admit it, your first reaction, uh, reaction was <coughs> you started to cough, you didn't like it. Smoking is inherently an unpleasant experience. But then you were told, but wait a minute, that's the transgressive thing to do, and so on and so on. So it comes afterwards that you start to enjoy it. It's the same with drinking, if not wine, at least the hard liquors. I mean, think of a bitter taste, they burn. So when you have a slightly dissolute father who tells you when you are six, seven, be a man, try it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a favor to your father, it's not. Then you learn. Uh, it, uh, so again, it's, it, it's strictly, I claim our pleasure in this kind of things is strictly a second level pleasure. It has more to do with, uh, how should I put it, with with social group, with participating in a collective act of transgression or what. I mean, let's be frank here. If you want to drink for pure pleasure, you usually do some stupid fruit juice. You don't go to <laughs> And I claim, but I don't have time to develop in detail, that it goes the same even for sex. I can understand if you want pleasure, masturbate. It's much simpler and so on and so on. I claim that collective sex, in the sense of not orgy, but <laughs> it's strictly something you have to learn. It's a learned experience. It doesn't come, it doesn't come naturally. Again, so you see my point, uh, which is that uh, violating the public rules is not done by a private ego, but is enjoined by the same public rules which allegedly prohibit this. This is what this is what uh, accounts for all the snobbery of an artistic taste. For example, me coming from snobbish Europe, <laughs> if you like classical music, I do, and the, we know who are supposed to be the big guys, Beethoven, his symphonies, and so on. But if you are in the closed circle of those who pretend to know it, if you say, if you make one of the obvious choices, no, like, I like Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. You're considered a total idiot. <laughs> the trick is to select a work which is usually neglected or considered minimal and to say, eh, but this is the real <laughs> And uh, if you know Beethoven, the field is getting pretty narrow there. When I was young, you could get away by opting a late string quarters. They are out now, too well known. Now you must go maybe because they are really hard and boring, the late piano sonatas are one of the candidates and so on, if you like them. So the point is, again, that it's only this slight deviation from the common wisdom which accounts for you strictly being in. And I claim the same goes to marriage. Uh, this idea of uh, marriage as Fidelity is typical adolescent idea. Since I'm at the Catholic University, I would say the whole wisdom of a Catholic church is based on the idea of what? That, that there is more than just the same 
the same group in the two works, adult and adultery. You become adult when you know how to practice adultery. <laughs> no, no, I mean, fortunately, literally, when, when you understand how, how, how to put it, the institution reproduces itself through its small transgressions, exemptions, and so on and so on. Let me give you the ultimate example. Did you see, to be ironic, of course, one of the greatest movies of Western civilization, The Sound of Music? <laughs> Look at it. It's a wonderful example of ideology. Uh, what's the true message of the movie? You know the story. Sister Maria sent to take care of the children of von Trapp family. Then she, okay, in the movie, Julie Andrews falls in love with Baron von Trapp, Christopher Flammer. Flammer. Then he fa she falls in love too much in a panic being sexually attracted to the, to the Baron. She goes, you remember, that's the crucial scene of the film, okay? She goes to the mother superior and tells her, I'm still tempted by the Baron, what should I do? It's a call to punishment, no? She asks, make me pray, make me fast, whatever. And then there is an incredible scene. Uh, which is totally obscene. I'm always almost ashamed of watching it. Do you remember what happens there? The mother superior sings a song. <laughs> obscene song which starts like, climb every mountain. <laughs> and the message of that song is, go back, seduce the guy, screw like crazy. <laughs> and that's, you see, and then there is no subversive whatever here. This is how Catholicism functions. You know, like, uh, I say this in all respect, not to blame Catholicism, Protestants are even worse and so on. <laughs> like, you know, uh, the message is not obey and don't do it. That's the explicit message. The implicit message is obey, pay lip service, and then secretly you can have all that you want. Maybe even, sorry for the obscenity, as a priest, all the small boys, and so on and so on. And strictly mean, without any offense to Catholicism, I think it's a great thing that, that effectively there must be something of what I call an inherent transgression. The cases of pedophilia are so numerous that you cannot account for it in this simple way. Yes, of course, priests are humans like others, so we have them. No, they have too much of them. It's, 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 a much more, uh, it's a much more complex thing. But again, what I wanted to emphasize is how, is how this is how religion works today. Even if you read some statements in most conservative Catholic countries, for example, recently I was in Poland, a very conservative, anti-Semitic country. It's very difficult to meet a Polish guy who is not a Jew and who is not anti-Semitic. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I, uh, and I was shocked about how there are even Catholic fundamentalists relate to sexuality. On the one hand, they have the usual the usual dogma, you know, only in marriage, blah, blah, blah. But then it was so clear that their real message to the young people was a much more obscene one. It was, look, in a permissive society where you just can do whatever you want, it gets boring. We offer you this thrilling additional pleasure of giving you rules which you are not only allowed, but secretly even solicited to to, of course, not publicly, to, to violate, and then this makes it for a much more thrilling sexual experience. A couple of times the priest even openly, even openly claims it, and incidentally, there is a truth in it, Ob obviously. Like, what about the opposite position? Someone like Marquis de Sade, brutally, just enjoy. I mean, I hope you got it after reading, for example, his most mechanical, systematic work, work 120 days in, in, uh, in Sodom, I think, or Sodom, Sodom yeah. That uh, how uh, you know, 600 cases of perversion, that after a certain number, I would say after 150, 200, it's totally desexualized, it becomes a pure formal logic permutation, like 430. You take a dog, an ox, a woman, two giants, and how they do it. Next example, you know, you take two dogs, two women, and whatever. It's totally desexualized. So, again, this 